Have you ever been afraid to be yourself? <clears throat> Do you struggle with saying true to yourself? Well, many people have had your problem, and many people have overcome it. You just have to know what you can do for yourself. It is imperative that everybody has a voice and can use it to stand up. So, what does it mean to have a voice? Well, having a voice means you can speak what's on your mind and communicate your beliefs. However, communicating your beliefs is not always simple. You must also be willing to stand up for them, and this is no easy task. I can remember so many times when I, to, when I wanted to share an interest with a friend or express myself, but I didn't because I was afraid. I was afraid of confrontation. Now the combination of having a voice and using it to stand up is called advocacy, and advocacy can be used in many different ways. Mwangi Boniface, a Kenyan activist and photographer, used advocacy to make a stand against his corrupt government. When a dictator had just come into power in his home country of Kenya, there was unrest in the streets. He experienced this firsthand. He used his, ad he used his advocacy to take a stand and form an organization that spreads awareness about the corruption in his government. Now you're probably wondering by now, What's up with all the trees? Well, advocacy is kind of like a tree. Both have roots. In advocacy's case, it is your morals, your identity, and your beliefs. These three things will keep you, you, even in the toughest of times. Even when people try their hardest to change you, to derail you, to blow you over, these roots will keep you, yourself. Now that you figured out what advocacy is, you can start to use it to better your everyday life. Now you're probably wondering, why do I want to practice advocacy? Well, 16 Personalities, a research website developed by Neris Analytics Limited, suggests that advocates have heightened decision-making skills, boosted confidence, and heightened insight. Now, these three things can seem rather minor, but despite how small they may seem, they can help your everyday life so much. In addition to this, my mentor, Ms. Pavelcheck, believes that advocates have a good conscience. This means they feel good about their decisions. Because advocates are so invested in what they believe in, they have no problem making making decisions based off of those beliefs. And I completely agree with this. When I was in fourth grade, our class had a mini election of sorts to see which presidential candidate was most popular amongst the student body. I remember all my friends asking me, hey, what candidate are you voting for? And when I told them, they were like, ew, really? You should vote for this candidate, for this candidate. And in the end, I felt the peer pressure. I voted for the candidate that was popular, but not the one that I wanted. Because of this, I came home sad that day. I had betrayed myself. I let others defeat me. If I had stuck to my gut, I would have come home so much happier that day. Now, with any great thing in life, there is bound to be obstacles, and advocacy is no different. So for starters, it can be difficult to go against the crowd. If you're the only person with a certain belief, and there's a vast majority of people with conflicting opinions, it can be difficult to get your opinion out there. And this can lead to stress, which brings us to our second point, stress. Stress often afflicts those who practice advocacy. Again, if you're the only person advocating for something, or you cannot get what you're advocating for off your mind, this can, lead to, this can lead to severe stress. And finally, being off balance. 16 personalities claims that advocates can drive their adamancy to unhealthy extremes, making them sick and even depressed. Now, these three obstacles can seem nearly impossible to overcome at some times, but I assure you, there are always ways to jump these hurdles. So, for starters, how do you overcome fear of going against the crowd? Well, try to talk to a friend or a family member that you know has similar beliefs. They can offer you advice, comfort, and they might even join your cause. And you can try to tackle stress a similar way. Again, try, talk to, try talking to a friend or a family member. And if this doesn't work, try taking your mind off what you're advocating for. Read a book, play a video game, or even do schoolwork. It may not seem that fun, but these little things can help to take your mind off what you're stressing over. And finally, being off balance, you have to learn how to compromise. Compromising is a valuable skill that everybody must learn at some point in their lives. You don't want to be known as that one person who won't get any work done because they don't listen to anybody but themselves. So, do you want to live your life as a prisoner to others? Do you want to be controlled by the people around you? Or do you want to be yourself? I press you to find your voice and stand up for your beliefs. Thank you.